Well, Spider-Man No Way Home forced me to do something I wasn't expecting. I have been forced to rework the Majesty, which is my super villain Mount Rushmore. No longer shall my Mount Rushmore only be those of Marvel villains. But William Defoe has opened up the gates for me to love too that I left behind in my childhood. <laughs> Yo, William Defoe's the goat, okay? Like, looking back at my childhood and thinking about the original Spider-Man movie, if you go back and watch that movie, his goblin is cheesy as hell. Like, he has just this weird, cheesy energy to him throughout the entire movie. But yo, if he is not menacing, because I said something to a friend of mine when we originally walked out of the theater. I said, up until now, Tom Holland's Peter Parker really wasn't fighting villains. Like you had Vulture in the very first movie, but at the end of the day, Vulture's just a guy, he's a human. If Spider-Man decides not to pull his punches, he's toast. In the second movie, we had Mysterio. Yeah, the illusions are kind of, you know, extra, but he's also just a human. If Spider-Man decides not to pull his punches, that's a dead Mysterio. William Defoe brings the multifaceted nature of Norman Osborn to bear. Because not only is he a threat that absolutely terrifies you, and I'm telling you right now, sitting in the theater and watching that fight that happens at Happy's place, where it's essentially for that, when the spider sense activates. Because up until that point, in all of the Spider-Man movies, we've never seen the spider sense just get serious to the point where it drowns out everything. Now, in the Tobey Maguire movies, you could say that, well, his spider sense allowed him to essentially take in everything that was going on around him and slowing down time. That is true, but we've never seen it work in the real, where the spider sense is just active and pounding, and it's not turning off, and it's drowning out all the sound, and everything is just muffled, like across the board, and he's freaking out because he doesn't know which villain in the room is the villain. And the villain ends up being the most unlikely target, which is the Goblin. Because not only did essentially the Goblin let Norman go and find Peter on his own, he then reassumed control. And I have to assume it was the Goblin that dropped the line when he was being contained. You know, I'm something of a scientist myself. As kind of like a mockery towards what Peter was essentially suggesting. But working with Peter to essentially create a fake cure, trying to set it up so he can blow up the apartment, giving that speech that completely inspires the villains to continue being villains, being wounded and hurt as Norman Osborn, as this scared guy who's terrified of essentially this other persona that he has that hurts and kills people turning into that persona and absolutely manhandling Tom Holland Spider-Man in that in that hallway getting just his face punched in and laughing maniacally and being super goofy about the entire thing William Defoe just brought so much to this movie and I absolutely love that they went and they got him and he came back because originally he wasn't going to come back he told them initially that if what they wanted was nothing more than a cameo from him, he wasn't interested in coming back to play the Green Goblin. So they expanded his role. Thank you. Thank you. Because for people like me, who are in their 30s, or who grew up with the original Raimi trilogy, Green Goblin hit the Eve and dumb Norman. So good. So good. And we already knew that William Defoe could bring his A game across the board. We've seen him kick just Oscars out the door in the lighthouse. And if you've never seen the lighthouse, go and watch the lighthouse and you will see just how amazing and manic he is in his performances. William Defoe gives 110% no matter what he does. He is the literal goat. 
And I love that the MCU was able to bring him back as the Goblin, where now I'm seeing kids who didn't grow up with watching the Raimi movies, like, when is he coming back? And, <laughs> like, are we going to be able to fight him again? Is Can he be, like, our MCU Goblin for, like, Tom Holland? That's great. That's absolutely great. It is great to see someone take a character that, for the most part, for what, the last... 10 15 years has essentially been reduced to memes take those memes turn them on their head and deliver a multi-faceted character that hits each and every one of the notes because throughout this entire movie there is no way you weren't terrified of the goblin happy to see him back in awe at just how ridiculously overpowered he was wanted to see him dead and then feel bad for the character at the end of the movie when he's cured and he looks at both the Peters and there's just like this sad dejectedness in his eyes where he's just like, what did I do? Absolutely broke me. And there are a lot of emotional things that happen in this movie. I should probably do a list of probably the, the top five most emotional scenes in this movie across the board but yo william defoe brought his a game and i really wish that we could probably get him to come back because if we could get him to come back to be norman osborne and the goblin again in the future tom holland movies i'd be happy i'd be 100 happy i'd be 100 on board with that but for the most part i feel as though he's gonna retire the goblin character or coming back as a goblin character um in toby's universe that's 100% fine by me. I'm just happy that the younger generation of Spider-Man fans were able to see just how fucking amazing William Dafoe is. But that's enough gloating on William Dafoe. We have so much more Spider-Man content coming this entire week. And I'm not going to fake. It may probably all drop before Christmas because I'm going to be super busy. And I'll probably take the weekend off. But I will see you in the next video. Peace.